Welcome everyone. Good morning. Good to see you all today in your place, right? Flowing in the grace of God. And isn't God good? Amen. So we have a lot to celebrate because he is a good, good father. Amen. Let's pray before we get into the word today. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for your presence in our lives and in this place, Father. Right now, we just say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. I ask you to take off every concern that someone came in here with today. I thank you, Lord, that we choose to roll our care over onto you because you are the one that cares. And Lord, we just say, Holy Spirit, speak to us in the way that you do. I thank you that we are receiving revelation from heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for signs, wonders, and miracles that accompany your word today. I thank you, Father God, for powerful, mighty moves of your spirit that we are seeing in the world today. And I thank you that there's even greater things yet to come. So we keep our anticipation and our sight on you because you, Lord, are doing mighty things in the earth today. And we are so glad. And we just thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, everybody says, amen. amen. Well, let's open our Bibles to Luke chapter 21 is where we're going to start. And the title of our message today is No Truth and Live Free. Right? The truth that you know totally correlates to the freedom that you walk in in your life. But one thing we want to define is the time frame that we are in. I know we talked a little bit about that last week. And I always like to say this. I like to ask the Lord, what time is it? What, on your timetable of things and events in life, what time is it? Or what do I need to know for where I'm at right now? And so Luke 21 jumps off the page to me. And when we're looking at Luke 21, really, there's several scriptures here that talk about the coming of the Lord. And we'll, we'll read some of them. But for sake of time, I encourage you to read all of Luke chapter 21. But it talks about, starting at verse, oh gosh, it's really hard to tell which verse we should start at because there's so much here. We're going to start at verse 8, and we're going to kind of jump around just a little bit today. And he said, Be on your guard and be careful that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name, appropriating them to themselves the name Messiah, which belongs to me, saying, I am he, and the time is at hand. Do not go after them. And when you hear of wars and insurrections, disturbances, disorder, and confusion, do not become alarmed and panic-stricken and terrified. For all this must take place first, but the end will not come immediately." Then he told them, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be mighty and violent earthquakes, and in various places, famines and pestilences, plagues, malignant and contagious, or infectious epidemic diseases, which are deadly and devastating. And there will be sights of terror and great signs from heaven. But previous to all of this, talks about how you will be persecuted. For the name of Jesus on your life. So the point is here, no matter who says what, I'm so glad I'm on the winning side, aren't you? Right? Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And if they want to come after me for serving Jesus, so be it, because I know I'm confident in the word, right? I know the truth of the word of God that tells me, John 16, 33, in this world we will have trials, we will have trouble, we'll have tribulation, but in the words of Jesus, take heart, for I have overcome them, therefore you're destined to win. The Amplified says that he overcame it and rendered it harmless over you. It can't overcome you because Jesus already overcame it for you. So no matter what comes, you know that you're on the victory side in Jesus. So you have to take a stand against a spirit of fear. When we talk about the things that are coming upon the world, as we read these verses, you can see it pretty clearly that these things are going on in the world today to some degree or another. So 
I know ever since Jesus moved on to heaven and sent us the Holy Spirit, we've been in the last days, the days where he will come again. But now we're a whole lot closer. So I say be ready because Jesus is coming soon. Amen? But verse um, 34 of what we're just reading here, we can keep on reading about how there's going to be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars, and people will start passing out for the fear that they are experiencing because they have no hope in Jesus. But you know what? We know, right? God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So you must know the truth. Friends, you must know what the Word of God says and be confident in this Word that is the truth. Anything that conflicts with this Word is a lie. It is not the truth. Amen? So, verse 34 says, Take heed to yourself and be on guard, lest your hearts be overburdened and depressed, weighed down with the giddiness and headache and nausea of self-indulgence, drunkenness and worldly worries and cares pertaining to the busyness of this life and lest that day come upon you suddenly like a trap or a noose for it will come upon all who live upon the face of the entire earth keep awake then and watch at all times be discreet attentive and ready praying that you may have the full strength and ability and be accounted worthy to escape all these things taken together that will take place and to stand in the presence of the Son of Man. So, you know, when we see conflicts going on in the world today, we should actually rejoice. (laughs) I know that's a thought, isn't it? That kind of makes your mind go, what? When we see conflict in the world, we should celebrate. You should rejoice because what we just got done reading says that is telling you and I that the coming of the Lord is coming closer all the time, right? And because we don't, we're in the world, but we don't belong to the world, we have every reason to rejoice. But we're not to get caught up in all of those things to the place where it messes with your love walk, where you aren't able to really function in your faith in God because you've let what's going on in the world really dictate how you respond instead of the word of God that how important it is that you don't get caught up or weighed down, not only necessarily with the crazy stuff in the world, but just even the busyness of life. You know, we can honestly just get super busy doing all these things, and it may be good things that you're doing, but I encourage you to keep yourself in that place of Jesus is coming soon, right? And if I truly believe Jesus is coming soon, which he is, then I'm going to be hopefully on my best behavior, right? I'm hopefully going to be all about my father's business because I recognize the time is at hand. You know, the enemy will often try to trip you up by what's going on, maybe something coming against you in your life, something going on in the world, and that's just a trap that he has put before you to get you to stop being the light that Jesus has called you to be in the world today. So know that when anything comes that tries to mess with you, know that Jesus, John 10 verse 10, he came to give you life and life more abundantly, where the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, right? But Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. So know that. It's like, I can't get off of this place of who I am in Christ. I got to keep on moving forward. I can't get caught up in the busyness of life. I recognize that the signs I'm just reading about are taking place right now, and it's picking up speed. That just means I should be throwing up my hands and say, "Woo, glory to God. That just means that Jesus is coming soon. So my question to you is, are you ready? Are you ready? I hope you're all saying, yes, Pastor Ned, I'm ready. You know, that resounding, if you've asked Jesus to come into your heart and be Lord of your life, you have nothing to be concerned about, right? Your destination from this point forward is heaven. So I encourage you, if you have not asked Jesus to come into your heart, right now you just need to say, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart and be Lord of my life. Forgive me of my sin. I believe you died on the cross for me. 
and therefore I receive you and I ask you to use my life for something great in Jesus' name. And that's all you got to say, right? Or something similar to that and receive Jesus today. And then you know for sure that as we're celebrating, Jesus is coming soon. You can celebrate with us. Amen? Because now you are a citizen of heaven. Glory to God. And that's the most important message you will ever hear. Romans, verse 8, excuse me, chapter 8, and verse 31 is where we're going next. And what should we say to all of this? If God is for us, who can be against us? I want you to realize that. Stop and think about that. If you really thought that God was with you, and for you, then wouldn't you be acting a lot different, right? I, th I encourage you to speak that over your life every day. God is for me. He is not against me. God is on my side. And when you realize God is on your side, as we're in the days that we're living in, and that we know that Luke chapter 10, verse 19 says, Behold, in the words of Jesus, I have given you, you, power and authority, to trample on snakes and scorpions over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall in any means harm you. If you truly believe God is with me, he is for me, he has given me his same authority that he gave to Jesus, therefore, I need to be not only going over that in my mind and getting that down on the inside of my heart, but I need to be acting like it's true, right? We talk about faith in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1, that says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Your faith in God looks like this. You act like the word is true. That's how you put your faith in motion. You act like the word is true. And therefore, you begin to see the results of your faith in that word that you are declaring and standing on. So faith acts like the word of God is true. Amen. I just want to put that in a real simple way. Faith acts like the word of God is true. So that means every time I'm reading the word, I'm going to act on that word that I'm reading. Today when we talk about we've got you know, faith in God, we've got his authority, I'm going to be walking and acting like that word is true because it is. Right? So that's just a little nugget in there. But turn to John chapter 8. Please, John chapter 8. John chapter 8. And verse 31. Actually, let's look at verse 29. And the words of Jesus are this. And he who sent me is ever with me. My father has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. Now, that's a really good declaration to have in your life. As he said these things, many believed in him, trusted and relied and adhered to him. So Jesus said to those Jews who had believed in him, if you abide, that word abide also means the word continue. If you continue in my word and hold fast to my teachings and live in accordance with them, you are truly my disciples. The word disciple means to be a disciplined one, right? So if we continue in his word and we hold fast to his teachings, then we truly are his disciples. And because of that, verse 32 says, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So you will know the truth of the teachings of the word of God because you continue in them, you abide in them, right? You are his disciple or you allow the word to discipline your life, right? Therefore, you will know, you know the truth of the word of God, and that truth that you know sets you free. So I encourage you, what truth do you know that brings freedom to your life? Because it's only the truth that you know that you can walk in the freedom of. So I know that there's sound of crickets right now as you're processing that. But at the same time, I want you to think of this. It's like, I, you know, I can know that I'm healed, right? I've got my scriptures on healing. 
I can say Isaiah 53, 5, all the day long by his stripes I'm healed and made whole. He sent his word to heal me and rescue me from destruction. Psalm 107, verse 20, I know these things, right? So I'm walking in the freedom of those things. But when the enemy tries to come and tempt you or sidetrack you, if you truly don't know the truth on what that is that's going on, you will fall into a trap and you will get yourself off course, right? And suddenly, no matter what's going on in the world, instead of letting the love of Jesus shine through you, suddenly you're letting hatred come up because you're really upset with what's going on in the world instead of operating in who you are in Christ and operating in your authority that he has given you. Do you feel like I'm preaching kind of broccoli message today? Yeah. But you know, we all need to hear this because it's the truth that sets us free. You know, let's keep on reading here. And they answered him in verse 33, we are Abraham's offspring and have never been in bondage to anybody. What do you mean by saying you will be set free? And Jesus answered them, I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, whoever commits and practices sin is the slave of sin. Okay, the word slave actually means to be held in bondage or under someone else's authority. In this case, it's the devil, right? So when you practice sin in your life, and we all know what that is. I don't have to sit here and list off all these different types of sins, right? Because you know when you're doing something wrong. You can say, oh, Pastor, I'm not sure if that's wrong. Oh, yeah, you know when, when you do something wrong, right? You know when you sin and you fall short of the glory of God. You know when you get caught up in those things. But, re but remember this. Now a slave does not remain in the household permanently forever, the son of the, of the house does remain forever. So if the son liberates you, makes you free men, then you are really unquestionably free. So when you have that familiar sin that tries to come knocking at your door and hold you back in life, you need to say, you know what? I am not a slave to sin. I am a child of God. I am a son of God, right? And I belong in his house forever. And he who the son, which is Jesus, has already set free through what he did on the cross for you and me, then I am truly free, right? So that's how you reverse sin trying to come and take a hold on your life when you know the truth and you can say, uh-uh, that doesn't belong to me, yeah. right? That doesn't belong to me. You got to talk not only to yourself, but you got to talk back to that thing and that sin that's trying to so easily beset you or entangle you and hold you back. Because that's what will make you an ineffective Christian, right? You won't be able to display Jesus in the world today if you're caught up in a sinful life yourself, right? But once you know the truth on this and say, you know what? I am not a slave to anybody. I am a child of God. I am a son of God. I am a daughter of God. I sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, right? Right next to Jesus, Ephesians 2 tells me. I'm seated in that place of power and authority, the same place Jesus is sitting, right? I am positionally there while I'm here on the earth. I've received Jesus as my Lord and Savior, but he has seated me in heavenly places the moment I received him. Therefore, I am not a slave to sin, right? In fact, I tell sin where to go. When that familiar spirit tries to come around, I say, ooh, ooh. You know, you can be serving Jesus for a long time, and there's something that the enemy knows that he can try to trip you up with. So what does he do? He sends it by your path, right? But if you've meditated on this word, right, and you know that, oh, my freedom is so much more precious to me than getting tripped up in sin for a moment that I need to say, uh, -uh I'm not a slave to that. <laughs> no, no, no. You're coming to compromise my freedom and who I am in Christ and the ability to walk in his power and his authority. And so I say, no, I'm taking the escape route here because I am free. Yeah. Jesus already set me free. And I know the truth of the word of God, and therefore I'm free. Amen? So let's look over at Galatians really quick here. Galatians chapter 4. 
You know, God wants his church free. You know, we can um, know the truth of the word of God and not walk in it. But today, we're saying, get it together, right? Say, I don't want to be a slave to sin. I don't want to be held in bondage in my life when Jesus already went to the cross for me and defeated death, hell, and the grave for me. So he purchased my freedom for me, right? So that I can be free and not held under any bondage of the enemy or not held under any shame in any way. So Galatians chapter 4 tells me, to, verse 5, to purchase freedom, Jesus came to purchase freedom, to ransom, redeem, and atone for those who were subject to the law, that we might be adopted and have sonship conferred upon us and be recognized as God's sons. And because you are really his sons, God has sent the Holy Spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, a bondservant, but a son. And if a son, then it follows that you are an heir, and by the aid of God through Christ. Glory to God. So not only have I been adopted as one of God's children, right? Therefore, I am an heir to what already belongs to Jesus. Amen? So I'm not a slave. I am a son. And I'm a daughter of the Most High God. Verse 13 of Galatians 5 says, For you, brethren, were indeed called to freedom. Only do not let your freedom be an incentive to your flesh and an opportunity or excuse for selfishness. But through love you should serve one another. Okay, look at that. And let's keep on going because I just saw another verse I need to read here. For the whole law concerning human relationships is compiled with one precept. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. But if you bite and devour one another in partisan strife, be careful that you and your whole fellowship are not consumed by one another. But I say walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and, and guided by the Spirit. Then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh of the human nature without God. And then it goes on to say what the desires of the flesh are and that they are opposed to everything that looks like Jesus in your life. So when you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have the Holy Spirit now living on the inside of you. So be led by what you are hearing on the inside. And when you know the truth of the Word of God, you can already know who you're hearing from, right? When God is speaking to you, you can know that it's going to line up with the word of God, right? And if we practice that more in our life, habitually, you are going to walk away from any sin that would try to come knocking at your door because you're led by the spirit and not by your flesh. Amen? Amen. So let's keep on going here for a second. And we're going to go over to Isaiah 54 and verse 14. Some things we need to really establish in our hearts. 2 Corinthians 5, 20, 21, I often say this, that we have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The moment you received him as your Lord and Savior, you're immediately in right standing with God, not based on your works, but based on your decision to ask Jesus to be Lord of your life. And so now you are in right standing with him. You are his righteousness. And verse 14 says this out of Isaiah 54, verse 14, you shall establish yourself in righteousness, rightness and conformity with God's will and order, and you shall be far from even the thought of oppression or destruction. For you shall not fear and from terror, for it shall not come near you. Amen. Glory to God. So look at that. When I am established in righteousness, which means I recognize that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, the moment I ask Jesus to be Lord of my life, 
he already placed me in right standing with God the Father. Therefore, I'm establishing myself or I am meditating on that fact. I'm declaring that fact out of my mouth. And therefore, I am free from oppression. I'm free from even the thought of the enemy putting something on me, right? Putting sin on me or putting a hold on my mind, right? Because that's to oppress, is to hold someone under. And that's what the devil does. But when I realize I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, I am far from or free from oppression, right? The enemy cannot oppress me, cannot mess with my mind, cannot get me to go on that side trip in my life when I recognize I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And it also says, not only am I free, not only am I free from oppression and destruction, but I have no reason to fear from terror because it's not going to come near me. This is a very powerful verse to declare over your life, right? Focus on the fact of not where you missed it, but the fact that you are his righteousness in, in Christ Jesus. You're in right standing with God the Father. Therefore, sin no longer has a hold on me. It does not belong to me. I, he's purchased freedom for me, so therefore I can walk in the freedom and the authority that Jesus already purchased for me. I can be a highly effective Christian that's walking in signs and wonders and miracles in the, word today, in the world today, knowing I am free from any holdback of the enemy. Amen? No fear lives here, right? For terror doesn't come near us. We are far from being oppressed or held under in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know about you, but that verse made me really excited. I was like, we are free from oppression. The enemy cannot hold us under. He cannot hold us back. The path of the righteous gets brighter and brighter, the word says. Mm -hmm. And we're going to end in one verse here out of Psalm 84. And verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows grace, favor, and glory, honor, splendor, and heavenly bliss. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. So I'm speaking to you today. Be free of the sin that so easily entangles you. Recognize the truth of the word of God that Jesus already came to set you free. Right? So we abide in his word today and we abide in everything that he's teaching us. We follow after his example. We stay connected to him. And when we look at the word here, it tells us that he doesn't withhold any good thing from us. Amen? That's powerful. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. God already disarmed every principality, every power, every type of holdback the enemy tried to bring upon your life. God already disarmed it over you. It's powerless over you. You are his righteousness. Therefore, no good thing is he withholding from you as you follow after that word of God today. Amen? Well, thank you all for joining us today. We're going to stop right here. We could continue, but we'll stop right here today. I encourage you to keep this in mind and keep this in your, the forefront of how you act and how you live. Jesus is coming soon. So are you ready? Be ready. Live in that state of being ready. Therefore, you don't have to worry about when is he coming? Because the Bible says we're not going to know the day nor the hour. We can just look out of Luke chapter 21 where we started and see that things are lining up pretty quickly. So just be ready. Know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and be ready today. Thank you for joining us and know that we love you. We're praying for you. If you have a prayer request, feel free to send it in so we can join our faith with yours and see God move mightily in your life. Because the Bible says when two of us agree on any one thing, it shall be done according to our Father in heaven. So grab your coffee, turn this back on at 1030. And you'll hear another word from God as we go into the sanctuary today that will change your life.
We'll see you next time.